Well, Adventure Mode was, as we know, it was already it, the the uh, the old version was already uh, kind of complete. It wasn't complete. I guess it's never been complete. <laughs> I don't know, how do we how do we phrase this? Yeah, Star Fortress is an eternal beta, but it was before, <laughs> and now we're trying to trying to. Uh... But, but we have just been adding the yeah adding the menus to it. We're almost done. Got a few more character generation menus to go, and stuff like the menu when you're falling down a cliff. You saw this maybe in the uh, the combat. Uh, video where it's like if you're flying through the air and you can grab a surface that menu is not done so just things like that um, kind of the main thing that's missing there is the quest log because we're not sure if we want to you know to what extent we want to incorporate legends mode into that or just kind of get through it as quickly as possible because we've got the deadline coming up um, and then work on that later when we do like dwarf mode leg legends incorporation so there's there's questions hanging out uh, there uh, art is almost done. We've got those portraits. You've seen the, um, uh, seen most of it. I'm not sure. Have you have you all seen palletized clothing yet? Palletized. That's um, like on the images for the icons on the, or on the for... portraits. Like like if you have an adamantine breastplate, it's properly colored and uh, I think that I've kind read of thing. About that. I'm not sure if we've actually seen art associated with that. I know we've seen a lot of different images of the the, the portraits. I'd have to go look at them again. But uh, I know we've yeah, seen a lot of yeah. There's so much. But... So much cool clothing now that's like, and we've done a bunch of variations now. Carolyn has drawn up several variations for all the different clothing types. So, like, I, I set up a dwarf in the arena with like a troll fur turban and a golden mask and a uh, a cape that was made out of like I don't know giant orca leather or something, and um, and also a uh, a steel breastplate. And then made ten pictures, and they all look different from each other, even though it's all the exact same equipment. So you can kind of uh, uh, get get a bunch of different looks. Uh, that was kind of important just to differentiate people, because there's so many people you talk to that are just kind of wearing, you know, a few pieces of clothing, and we didn't want them all to look the same. Uh, it helps with the the hair too, and all that kind of thing. So it's 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 going well. That part's going well. Uh, we're just locking down the audio stuff. We got all the sound effects in. We got sounds for flying. I've uh, got sounds for rainstorms, got sounds for being in every different biome or whatever, um, combat sounds, hoof hoof sounds if you're mounted um, and, and moving around and so forth. So there's, that, that's all going really well. Um, so I've got to finalize the music is, is sort of the thing that's going on now is just making sure that the music is good uh, and mu the music's playing at the right time and we're, we're experimenting with, the, with different timing and so forth there. So that's cool. Um, yeah, and then we've got to get into this. Uh, kind of the last month here is really this uh, this sort of like tutorialization and cleaning up the towns, just that kind of work we need to do. Right, it's like the stuff that, like I was saying earlier, that is, it hasn't already existed in classic <laughs> mode. It's just like putting, it's just like it, we did for for dwarf mode. It's like mainly just making the UI up to date. And then like with these last, these last period of time before, the beta comes out. We're just gonna try to uh, uh, maybe get in this, uh, or maybe after. I don't know. Make the tutorial. The tutorial is just you talking to your god, your your uh, deity, and the deity will uh, will give you a quest. So that as we like adventure mode right now is mainly a tool to to look at your the world in which your fortresses inhabit mm -hmm. is mainly what it's designed around. But we were thinking that maybe we want to have. A, more of a, a direction that it could <laughs> if you so choose yeah yeah we were even thinking about making it so that you can uh that the hardest difficulty you can set which is just that your skills are less that and stuff like that you start in a weirder position or lesser less fortunate position that you're you have no way of knowing where to go and you're you, there is no god you can talk to and stuff like that we, we're still forming Forming the like how we're gonna do that and yeah. do the tutorial. Whether we actually like regress out the quest compass and stuff that we had in those modes and save that for like the hero and demigod version. Um so yeah, it's it's it'll it'll be it'll be neat to see the choices that they get made there. And then we'll of course have a beta, which is nice and we can respond to feedback. Um and we'll be responding to feedback as long as we need to. I'm actually really curious about the the demigod tutorial system for a few reasons. Uh, the the first of which just being like it's a new system, so it's something that none of us have seen before. <laughs> but it's it, it's a curious thing because I've seen a lot of people referencing like the old demigod system because it used to be a very 
It used to be sort of like just here is your almost your sandbox mode because you just get to jump all the way to end game because you get so many more points. Uh, what are players who are used to playing like that going to do if they want to just start with an overpowered adventurer? No, that's already handled actually, and we responded. Yeah, that that was that was something that um, we were thinking about a little bit, but then when we saw the player feedback, okay, we're like, okay, jump on this. Now we have two separate things. There's your starting position, uh, whether you're. Um, ordinary or a hero or a kind of chosen which is how it's phrasing demigod right now just in case you're you pick a type of person that can't have a divine parent uh but then there's also separately just flat out kind of just like ford mode has now it's just like difficulty level easy normal hard that determines your starting points so you can do an ordinary character with a ton of starting points to play a sort of overpowered character that isn't going to have god pop-ups and stuff like that or going to have like the kind of extra direction or luck we're trying to get in on the hero side um but you can also play on easy on, on sorry on hard mode as a chosen person and be kind of down and out without very many skills but still just have have it have a uh, a guided experience where your your parent is like well, you know, maybe you could you could try and fight a hoary marmot or something. My horrible, stupid little child that isn't very good at anything. And then it bites your ankle and you die of an infection. <laughs> yeah, except your parent might cure you then. They're like, yeah, we're going to give you yeah, a, so give another. Yeah. <laughs> the other like something that doesn't exist now or doesn't exist in classic mode that we're thinking about relying on for how to for new players is the ability to actually or the ability the the uh having stuff that can actually grow your limbs back for instance <laughs> because it's like that that meme with the arrow in your knee or whatever it's like your your adventuring life is over when that happens and that happens quite a lot because of the uh the combat system the drag slay combat system Something else that I'm curious about with the uh, with with the demigod tutorial system is this something that like you're gonna play through once as a tutorial or maybe twice just to refresh yourself, kind of the way the fortress mode tutorial is, or is this something that you are going to replay? Is it gonna have any kind of differences between? Like, is it going to end up being more of a playstyle, or is it going to be strictly a tutorial mode? It is definitely a playstyle. Um, that's that's the goal is to have you. You know, I want to play my. Uh, my Clash of the Titans, you know, Ray Harryhausen uh, version of the game uh, where I'm sick of talking to people in taverns and trying to figure out where to go. In a sense, it's going to start out as just a Band-Aid for that. Like, like, cause that's, you know how annoying that is, right? It's like, I can't find where I'm trying to go. They don't know where the person is that's trying to tell me where to go. It's going to take us a little while to fix that. That's high on the list of things for us to fix, but in order to just kind of get this process started, we're going to, we're going to focus on this method first and then go back and fix ordinary mode as well to make it more satisfying to talk to people for directions and so forth. But right now, ordinary mode is just going to remain a kind of absolute sandbox in the old style. Uh, that is a little bit frustrating when we're talking about directions and so forth like that. Um, but that we want to have, have people be able to just kind of jump into this, um, making the game fun. It's, it's, I mean, it's, it's less about telling you keys to press and stuff like that than it is about, um, you know, I just want to go have some fun and I need you to help me find it. A right. Bit. Yeah. Like the, the, the fun is more like, a like we're more one of these typical dungeon crawl type, uh, type of games where you'll, the, the God will tell you to go find a treasure or something like that. And then, uh, you'll, you know, like, like in the classic mode, these dun these dungeons are more like, um, like holes in the ground with like one just tunnel that goes to a, a dragon and the and a pile of treasure and it's really really simple and uh so if we have time this is one of the ones like we'll, like we'll tr we'll try to get the god stuff in there we'll try to get you know as much as we can before the beta but uh we're like one of the things we're gonna really work on at first is uh you know before anything else is the making the dungeons like more like a traditional role playing game? They're they're God's create and and you know this is going to be we're going to have sim in world gen or whatever. It's like there's reasons for these things to exist. <laughs> it's in the simulation, so it's not just a kludge to yeah yeah. I mean they're going to feel a little vault like at first. Um, not not. I mean we're trying to to make them more interesting than the vaults basically. Um, and uh, the, so that's kind of the, the three-pronged approach is like a, a deities that, that connect to a kind of 
uh, better dungeon system that also connects back around to a fixed up town system where you can buy and sell stuff. And right. um, you know, there might actually be consequences for for you know robbing. Yeah. Like, what, are you gonna, what, what are you going to do with these? <laughs> like, what's the point of a treasure when you can just go in and yeah. see all the crap on the ground? It's not even arranged correctly at this point. Yeah. So we got it. We got it. It's it's basically. I mean, it's a fa- fairly you know tall order for us to to get it all cleaned up um and we're just going to do our best for the beta and then continue on to the release and then the thing is it's like this is like we're we're kind of trying to return now to to dwarf fortress like we're just going to keep working on it like the after after the the official update and then we'll just keep working on it right so it's 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 uh we're back. We're finally yeah. Yeah, we're gonna get out of these <laughs> stupid menus. Our yeah. scroll bars are that's gonna be driving turn insane. Yes. This is this the the next one of these that we do will be the first one that I've ever done with what either of you where uh the we're actually talking about new stuff and not known quantity stuff that's being actively worked on. Which is gonna yeah, be yeah. we feel the, we feel the pain. <laughs> yeah. it's so, so exciting. In, in my notes here for questions to ask, uh, I have a bunch of topics that I've kind of that were very commonly asked questions from the like the forum that I put out. And one of the like set of notes that I have is actually from one of the um, posts from last year, uh, which is talking about sandbox problems. And it's something that you guys have mentioned a couple of times. You know, things like characters feeling cookie cutter. Um, uh, battle being merciless and it not being simple to heal. I'm just kind of curious as to, uh, outside of the demigod option of play, is there anything else kind of being done to combat this, or is this just kind of the current state of the true sandbox, like you said? Uh, I think the, the, the dungeon stuff to, you know, as, as we get that in, uh, that's all going to be in ordinary mode as well. Uh, like you'll, those will be available and they will be, if there's some healing type stuff there, or if you, perform some kind of you know uh service for the temple uh that you would do as a as a sort of directed god quest but you decide to be a religious character as an ordinary person and you decide to go get a relic from a dungeon or something like that you can derive the same benefits but you're just going to have to work for it and you're going to have to to kind of make that part of your story um there we have we have other ideas kind of farther in the future about um, what the what the kind of magic magics I'm mean, just myth magic stuff basically about um, how how we're incorporating that into not just dungeons but the rest of society that's also going to have these kind of effects um, but that that's the beginning is that the ordinary road mode is not completely robbed of these things at first because the 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 dungeons will be there and anything that we add to the dungeons is going to be for everybody. Interesting. Um, speaking of dungeons, uh, in older versions of the game, there were things like the, the catacombs under the human cities, which I've only ever seen screenshots of because whenever I tried to go <laughs> into those human cities, the game lagged so badly that I wasn't able to move and just would give up uh, and retire the adventure. So how is the frame rate looking, especially with goblins populations exploding again? Yeah, I, it's good. I mean, it, the, 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 fort, the fort mode optimizations have really helped a lot there. And in the last, you know, month, month, and month, and 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 change that we're working with here, that's also a um, a kind of a, a Putnam thing. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna be working a little bit more with. Uh, I went through. I mean, I, I went through a goblin a goblin place uh, prior to doing the uh, the fix where they've got like Moneris and stuff now in their in their siege populations, and it was running like. Um, there was no noticeable difference. There were there were 800 goblins there, and it, it made no difference at all. I'm a little bit worried that you know when you throw a couple hundred Moneras on the mix and a couple hundred extra trolls, that we'll be back into you know slight decreases, and we're going to see what we do about that. I mean, ultimately, I don't want to do like population calls where it's not placing the creatures, but if it comes to it, it comes to it. Um, and uh, so we're going to keep the we're going to make sure the frame rates are up, but they they look good already, which is amazing. So, so when the beta branches out, try and find the place with the biggest uh, population and run directly at it and see if you can move. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then and then yeah, save, okay. send those send those saves in. You know. Sweet. Um, um the next thing is uh, you, you, you meant it, it was mentioned in a previous log that um, towns are being cleaned up and cities are aiming to be improved. Um, currently, towns are just kind of like a collection of squares with people in them. Um, yeah. Is this like a town kind of layout, or is this like the way people behave in towns? I, or actually, more accurately, what what kind of things are you thinking of improving 
on. So re- the very first thing we're going to do is get the uh, get the it's not it's the way you buy and sell stuff in the stores. Like right now, the stores it's just littered with stuff that you can just pick up and walk away. And I think the biggest consequence of that is that they won't sell to you anymore, but they didn't have to sell to you in the first place because you could just walk away. So it's like uh, fixing that so there's a point to actually bringing a treasure back to trade with for better equipment. That's that that is what we call fixing the towns. Um, yeah, I mean this yeah. is a very small. I mean this is like I, of course we want to do NPC schedules and stuff like that. Um, that's out of scope. Yeah, we're talking about we're talking about like we're trying to get this working at the yeah <laughs> by the beta right after the beta something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I mean the 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 thing is that like a lot of the town stuff already works. It's just that they rely on furniture stockpiles of traded or built furniture in order to have tables in the town shops to place their goods on and have like the chest with the money and stuff like that uh, and if they didn't build those things in world gen then they aren't actually put in there and and it's really one of these things where it's like okay you know that's that's aspirationally fantastic but let's just give them a damn table for a second yeah no i, I th- it's it's kind of um strange when you wander into a town and there's like 50 people in a tiny little box and there's like no furniture yeah. or anything and just like clothes yeah. on the ground it's like do i want to ask what happened in here <laughs> like, <laughs> um so yeah no that, 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 that that's that's nice to hear I, I'm, I'm looking forward to just kind of all these changes because it's been fun because i've gone back to adventure mode a couple times recently and it's been one just kind of neat seeing how different things are again like because you kind of your brain kind of glazes over the differences between the older versions of the game and the current version of the game and you you forget how things were at one point and you miss all the niceties that you have now. Um, at least mm-hmm. I do. Um, maybe other people are different, but when, when I'm going back into adventure mode, some, something that I always bump into is right. It's like, right. I really don't find a lot of these layouts particularly compelling. It's like, I just want to get back out into the wilderness. I don't really want yeah. to be out in this helix any longer. Um, and you know, uh, one of the more common types of questions that I got in my, in my survey was basically just like, slice of life stuff you know like farming like can we do stardew valley things and it's it's a hard question to respond to because not really um so i guess that's kind of my next question when it comes to like longer term improvements um will there ever be a world where we are able to dig farm make more items than just a sh- like an axe <laughs> yeah I mean that's that's been on the dev pages forever, right? Yeah. It's like one of those, and it's not, and it's not even one of the kind of off in the power goals type things. It's like right on the main page. It's like here is, you know, ding, 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 ding. We're gonna add these yeah. port mode skills in, add livestock, and right. We just been, yeah. and we just like we don't even know what's the most popular anymore. We've been so like at like fix or design thing anymore because we've just been we on these scroll bars and stuff and it's like <laughs> it's given us uh nearsightedness because it's like all we want to do is just finish this before uh yeah i mean anything else and all our energy is going into that and then we just need to get back onto yeah onto designing as, the actual as, game. as much as we've as much as we've looked at for the future stuff is basically how do we kill the big weight how do we mm-hmm. take those all of those things like the entity improvements and the combat arc not even the army one but like the combat one uh and just start incorporating things that make sense on smaller and a smaller kind of update um, fashion without kind of getting, I mean, we're still yeah, got the same size goals, but we've kind of figured out how to do like the map rewrite without being stuck for 10 months. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's like we, we were always trying to come up with different ways to save Tarm from insanity. And one of them was to have these <laughs> long kind of goals, like the economy, or arcs. That's what we called them, arcs. Like the economy arc, the magic arc. And we've been working for months and months and months to, on these arcs, but we've decided that uh, that doesn't work anymore. We wanted to do magic before anything else. So we're breaking the arcs into little chunks. And yeah. so, and so if the we, magic yeah. begins. We have healing potions suddenly. They're that's yeah. magic. We got gods interfering. We're gonna have um, some some interesting things though, because we haven't kind of given up the dream of having you know creation myth stuff. We're just gonna start start in on it, and then at that time when we start incorporating those things, we're gonna pick um, some other stuff, army arc stuff, villains finishing stuff, and 
Um, you know, if that if that includes uh, like the first thing is not bringing back farming, of course, right? It's getting the cabins working in. We have we have certain promises to keep, right? Like people um, that already exists, and it's in exa exactly in the vein of what you're talking about, right? Is like. Um, you know, I can make my little cabin. I can have my friends hang out there. I can have them build it while I walk away. I can come back. That existed before. We'll get that back in. And then that was just like a a short stone's throw away from, hey, why can't I just build a workshop? And of course, the the inertia there, the inertia that's been the inertia for a zillion years on Adventure Mode is like, well, we don't want to have workshops in Adventure Mode. We want to have individual furniture things. And then we want to go put furniture over into Fort Mode and have workshop zones. And then we can finally get the uh, recipe lists in that modders have probably already had for 500 years. And... This is, opposed is this to the right decision. Yeah, we can right, do yeah. it. We'll just do it. Or you could, or you could be commanding your dwarf fortress armies across the map, and you know something like that. But something more fun than crafting individual chairs. Yeah, well, people have different play styles. Yeah, ex yeah exactly. You, you you said something that uh, piqued my interest in that last uh, chunk, which was healing potions. Um, <laughs> and I've got a, a thing that says I'm extremely curious about those new healing methods in adventure mode and fort mode. Uh, can I ask about healing potions? Uh, we just yeah, I mean that's that's shorthand, but yeah, um, we we have liquids already. We have imbibing. It's just a simple way to do a syndrome. We already have regeneration syndromes. We already have all that stuff. Everything's basically sitting there to do that in. Like, but we wanted to kind of tie it into stuff, but we also want to have some stuff in there as we go. So I think there's going to be kind of a bit of retconning as we get to the creation myth stuff of like, why, <laughs> why is the world the way it is? Um, you know, it's, it's, it's not, not the way we would have preferred to, to do it before, but I think, um, but that means it's like, there's no, there's nothing hard coded about these. I don't think we're ever going to do like hard coded magic stuff. So the thing that's intriguing about this is like, that that in just immediately implies some kind of procedural liquid generator, right? Um, and then, like, what the hell does that mean? That's cool. Um, and how does that tie into all this other crap that's that's in the world? Is that is it like because it doesn't mean that there's like just potions around like net hack just sitting around, although it could who knows? But it probably means there's a pool or something like some kind of a fountain of whatever uh, down at the bottom of some dungeon. Uh, you know, and there might be that might be the holy relic you're actually trying to get is like some kind of water, you know, um, some kind of divine ointment or something, rather than um, you know just finding a level three healing potion, you know, on level five of the dungeon, and then the priest might want that, um, and then you know if you're if you're you know partaking yourself, um, that's between you and God, and God could just be sitting there chatting, you'd be like, go for it, buddy, um, or not, you know. For, uh, so people from a very long time ago uh, who've been around my streams for a bit might remember there was a fort that I had once and it was one of the few forts that I actually rage quit and stopped playing because I had a lake that was literally titled the stupid lake. I didn't name it that. It was an evil lake that had a evil rain above it and it rained a syndrome that if you touched it, it made you start projectile vomiting, unable to stop forever. Um, <laughs> so, I'm just kind of imagining this is like the inverse of the stupid lake, except you touch it and you heal, which is nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, and it's and it's like it's it's the kind of thing where it once you have those procedural liquids or whatever and and that kind of thing, then immediately you're like, well, hey, good regions, I could just add like mists or I could add rains that do the same thing. This sounds like a thing that modders may have already been able to do. I, I don't recall. Maybe um, it, it's it seems possible to link it up, but I might be missing some token or another. Um, and uh, yeah, then you could have a. I mean, is that is that like easy easy mode for fort mode to just like, hey, yeah, my hospital is a zone out in the clearing, and we just wait. <laughs> it's like a it's a it's a good biomedy. Just wait for it to rain. Yeah, and just set up your drinking. Uh, your drinking zones on the you know the river, and they might complain a little bit about being river water, but it's like, hey, it's good river water. Of course, the uh, the myth the uh, myth uh, world gen when they, when we're creating these good zones, when we get back into magic and myths and stuff like that, maybe the rain only happens when you've appeased the correct <laughs> god instead of just happening to rain on you. Yeah, that's an untapped um, untapped discussion here. Um, this is something we've been thinking about as we go with this demigod thing: is dwarf mode temples, and what this might mean. You know, even in the short term for um, for how how dwarf mode temples work and how they might um, 
like anything that can happen in terms of your your god interceding uh it could be something that happens in fort mode um and you could have you know actual actual weird weird things happening uh which is yeah. cool so something else that I saw mentioned a couple times in the questions is back in a relatively recent roadmap post, um, translation options were mentioned. Like uh, it was essentially just like you're working towards that direction. And um, myself and some other people are also curious, has any progress been made on that front at all? Um, yeah, I mean, the, 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 there, hasn't been a, uh, there hasn't been a key, a key pressed or a commit made in that direction, but we've, uh, Putnam and I have, have kind of, fronted it as as like one of the next kind of top three priorities for for things to look at is just hey can we can we tackle the um the display issues um making sure we can know if you want to get eight thousand four hundred chinese characters on the screen uh, which of course makes classic mode interesting too i mean <laughs> we'll see what we'll see what options we can take away from that um but the uh you know getting widescreen double 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 um i'm not widescreen double what are they called double 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 wide double wide characters uh displayed um and then kind of you know it, it's also a project to go through and separate out tool tips are already pretty separated out but they're not out in files getting interface um text out in files so you can get through this kind of first uh first check box right of of um uh, on on like a, a a translation, which is like, hey, the interface is translated. We have not tackled legends mode yet, and giant paragraphs that have all kinds of really hairy grammatical um, information that is basically like, can you imagine talking to like the translation team on that? You basically need a technical translator for every language, um, and really not you don't just give them a list of things to translate you have to have conversations that are fairly in depth about the grammars and and try and get that stuff exposed so we've been talking about like you know uh the future of lua scripting in the game and that kind of thing like is is that gonna be part of this solution uh you know we're, we're just starting to hash stuff out um but yeah so the answer is is yeah no we haven't been just completely ghosting and ignoring the issue this is literally um you know as a long long conversation uh, like Putnam says in the chat over there uh <laughs> it's kind of horrific uh, apparently um <laughs> speaking of things that were, are potentially kind of horrific uh the i i haven't heard anybody mention anything about um uh, agents and villains in a really long time um so i'm curious if any of that stuff is working its way in at this point or if that's something that we're gonna have to wait for at a later date so uh, the it was kind of I I did mention it just a little while ago because it it was basically in the death of the arcs which are something I think we all because I've never finished an arc in my life I think people would kind of agree that we need to start thinking about things a little differently well yeah rest in peace arcs yeah but so so that means that the 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 villain stuff is just coming in with other stuff as we go we already have like every time we talk about a thing we're like demigods oh does that mean there's other other demigods in the world uh do they get god intercessions are they do they have goals are they doing things right another um, another thing would be the uh with these dungeons and the and telling you where to go and uh also the the thing that the that it was designed for in the first place exploring a world within your with your fortresses and seeing the bigger picture the villains all they were trying to do is steal your artifacts so you could steal them back, and that could be a thing. Yeah, so, I mean, that's the, a the, that's the, a villainous the, thing. So follow the <laughs> follow the clues, which is what villain's villain arc was all about. Yeah, and, we have catch the yeah catch the thief investigations, plots, yeah. all of that stuff is still uh, right right in the right in the mix. Uh, the other ideas we had for you know expanding uh, magic systems and other magical characters all had that kind of we can finish the villain arcs with this sort of inflection to them but um yeah it's all it's all part of the uh and we we have i mean there's there's things to check off too like those six basic plots i believe are missing in fort mode like we got the heists artifact heists are pretty much in um but other stuff like assassination plots coups um the uh what, what other ones are there basic bribery um well when you get a when you get an informant I wish they kind of do already when they're doing the artifact heist, but it's more specific than that. Uh, in any case, we have the uh, the um, those those all need to be done. Um, so 
Yeah, it's it's. I think the reason it faded, the main reason the villain talk faded, is because the villains were specifically the thing being put on the back burner to do menus for four mm -hmm. four years or whatever. Yeah, yeah. They're just. It's just the the last arc that had to be. Yeah. Sacrificed. <laughs> yeah, but 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 yeah, but we said you know sacrificed in the sense of the myth and magic being well, sacrificed as well. Right. It's yeah. well sa the way we sacrificed it was to chop it up into little bits. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I have two <laughs> relatively related questions to one another that I've written down, which are um, since the forums vanished for a minute, there. Um, does future of the fortress have a future and the other question i have related to this is will the dev page be updated once adventure mode is out <laughs> okay so forums i mean that was a hard that was a hard nasty crash kernel panicky i don't understand what happens still uh we're getting a new forum uh made new server uh this should involve https it should you know the modern era or you know several steps back from the modern era but still more modern than we were um as usual uh and then we're gonna we're gonna pause the form for half a second migrate it over um uh, into a new smf or whatever everything up to date and so because all that's going on and because it happened right at the change of the month with all this other stuff going on i just forgot future of the fortress for a couple weeks i mean well some of it i couldn't do future of the fortress because there was literally no forum and then when i put the forum back i was in the mix of all of this other crap going on it's not it's i mean i i love having a monthly q a i think it's a great way for me to figure out what's going on it's a great way for me to sit down and think about things at a at a period where i feel comfortable doing that every month um so i'm yeah no it's it's that's that's all that's all still there i'm just it's just such a weird time um and then the um i've already forgotten the second part of what you said uh, will the dev page be updated on uh, a12games.com slash dwarves? The dev page. Well, as you, as you can kind of tell in this conversation, we're massively in flux on what the dev page means. Uh, it's like everything listed there is still exactly what we want to do with a few additions. And like the categories would just be called categories now instead of arcs or something. So there's not much to change, although we need to kind of pick 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 a new set and front it and what that looks like is different than it looked like before like before i think you know some years back we we're like oh we're just obviously going to pick up the villains right where we left off finish them all the way and then do the siege and army arc and finish that all the way and then um uh, adventure mode medical and then at that point we would consider doing anything else uh, and that, you know, after some years, we'd just be so flat-footed on what Adventure Mode is now and so flat-footed on Dwarf Mode. Like, there's there's just not as much stuff for Dwarf Mode there that it would feel like Dwarf Mode had been set down for two years or something. It's ridiculous. It's just not tenable uh, with the way things are now. So um, these kind of Kit Fox roadmaps we've been putting up are kind of like the dev pages, and essentially there's a way we could... I mean, that, that's, that's essentially a copy-paste job backwards... And we don't quite want to do it that way. Uh, so I think there's going to be this kind of process where we figure out what our Kit Fox roadmaps are and what our dev page is and maybe just have that be a little cleaner. Something like that. But not while I'm in the middle of these damn menus. I just don't care. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I'm so done. But it's fine. Everything's fine. Just like the dog. So my last kind of adventure mode related question is uh, you mentioned earlier that art is still being worked on. Um, once this update is out, will the like multi-parted, sleek breastplate have a sprite in fort mode? Or is that still going to be invisible? <laughs> and will they have sprites uh, when they're holding named items? Uh, Jacob's already handled this, I believe, and I'm just behind. Okay. Um, yeah, data entry. I'm just I'm the bottleneck for all this all the all the art. He's just one man. I'm just one man. So it's there. No, well, and and yeah, we're hoping we will get to it um, you know, when it's it's art that's finished is pretty high priority because you just need to type some numbers in and then hey, uh problem solved. Um so you know, we have we have that, I believe. Um and then uh, of course I'm yeah, I continue to fall behind cuz uh Jacob just finished all of the necromancer experiments. Uh so we we get uh properly like we have a picture of a three-eyed child's skull now, and it can have one to four horns on it. Um, That's... It's sick. 
I I have an unte- <laughs> I, I have an intelligent undead zombie baby that's been zero years old for ten years. <laughs> Mom still carries it. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> That, that that is equally disturbing, I think. But <laughs> it's, yeah, it's a broad spectrum of of uh, of disturbingness. Are they going to be know, colored the necromancer experiments, or are they still just like a black dark silhouette? Well, you know, it, it's it, the funny thing about necromancer experiments is they can only be charcoal or black in the code. Really? Uh, and that was a part of that was a mistake in my my random objects thing, because I wanted them to also be like bluish green or grayish colors. And we simply didn't have any colors that satisfied the uh, equation I put in. And I just logged that when we were talking about Necromancer Experimenter palettes, or experiment palettes. And I noticed that and I was like, we don't even have midnight blue. Like that was at least supposed to clear. And now we're thinking like, okay, this it's time just to have more colorful. I mean, it's it's like, it's cool that they're night creatures and have the night tag, and so the night tag restricts them to night colors. But that's all too literal, right? It's just yeah. too literal. Let's have some cool looking experiments, and we got palettes now. We've got more palettes, um, and uh, so they, yeah, they'll be they'll be pelletized. They'll be more they'll be more colorful. I'm not sure if they'll have. Uh, we're trying to get portraits done in time as well, rather than just the the full body um, the full body stuff for them. Uh, portraits are a lot of work, as you can tell from these Carolyn images that are oh. coming down. Like, there's just a lot of work goes into them. But we, we're going to try and have uh, necromancer experiment uh, portraits because they're playable. They're playable characters, and you don't just want to have like a silhouette or something in your portrait field. You want to have the real deal there. Um, and we'll 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 be uh, getting that in, you know, at some point. Um, and that that that's fun. Uh, animal people are in in progress. I believe uh, about a hundred animal people portraits have been finished. Now. Yeah, that's incredible. And uh, I've still got eighty six left to do. <laughs> that's a lot uh, of portraits. Is, yeah, they're just been, there's it's it's cool. It's just like you know, Neil Rice is do, good is doing a great great job. Yeah, the the audio and the and the visuals for this game, like when we when we decided to to upgrade for the steam version we we, we spared no expense just, <laughs> you know. so much stuff it's yeah and we have um uh what else is coming i mean we just did some basic stuff that need to be done like shop signs uh and uh there's things like the cloud overlay it's like okay we're doing it it's deeply silly that adventure mode has right. this and but it's a, part of adventure mode the, you know, there's a few buttons left too like mm-hmm. uh like just in, interface buttons like uh listen to sounds yeah like the sounds the sneak yeah sneaking is a big one like like the tracking and stuff that's all pretty straightforward but yeah the stealth cones that we had uh we have like the vision cones that have those diagonals but stealth cone like multiple overlapping diagonals i hope that isn't a big headache but we'll see what that we'll see because it should be fast but then we're like oh well then it turned out not to be fast um and um uh, yeah, a few other things that we may not get to, like dimming. Dimming for day night was always cool and classic, and it's just you know obviously a bigger thing to chew off uh, in graphics mode. Um, we'll see what we get. Yeah, I don't remember if there was some other part of the question we're not replying to, but rambling is part of the job. Yes, I, I will agree with that. Um, <laughs> so we've moved into audience questions. Um, the the first question comes in from you guys are legends and their question is um in last future of the fortress you state that you're trying to kill the big weight entirely what does this mean exactly and when can we start seeing the myths implemented yeah so killing the big weight entirely like we had mostly done that um to the to the to to um as it as it related to magic and things like that the as we had went went through, you know, I don't know, seven or eight or twelve future of the fortresses, it was kind of becoming obvious that the map rewrite was what the big weight was actually about, right? It was just like the map rewrite is hard. Going into all of the cavern layers and the really kind of held together by by uh, by tape and etc. Um, right, we're the, trying to stop is... the the three levels. It's always three levels of caves. Then the magma, yeah, and yeah, we, that has to be different for the magic release because you're going to be going to, in adventure mode, you're going to be going to different different worlds and stuff. It's, yeah, it's, and so it has to be made differently. Yeah, and it seemed like save compatibility would be a huge problem there, and but also just getting those getting those things up. But then I I just thought about it when I actually kind of sat down with it and started working on some stuff um, that. 
it can be done. Like it can, it can even be save compatible in a way that's kind of like carving out old and new pieces of the map and blocking them out. Um, there, it's 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 possible to to incrementally put in the stuff that we wanted to put in, even the planar stuff. Uh, like I probably mentioned before, I have my own little uh, version control little branch now that I'm a version control person, and uh, I've got I've got pocket planes working uh, with their own world maps and stuff like that. It's all uh, it it and, and it would just merge in like without problems. Um, so cool, right? Uh, and uh, yeah, that was the big way though. Yeah, yeah. The other parts of the big weight were just like we wanted to. It was part of it was the um, the model we had for uh, distributing the game and so forth, where we wanted to do a big magic release, and it needed to justify its existence and kind of make an impact. Um, is what we were thinking. So we wanted to finish it. We wanted to get a good creation myth thing together that had magic systems, both modes, adventure mode and fort mode right and we could afford to do this back then because we did yeah we just yeah, yeah we just, there was money the money was was uh was coming in coming steadily. in on patreon and then you get a big bump of like you know hey here's an extra ten thousand dollars for releasing a nice big thing and so forth now i think we can afford to do it incrementally i don't i don't worry that much about it right um so uh that that lets us remove that part of the big weight uh, so those two things together, and there's probably more uh, that we were just kind of looking at all the different angles for how this thing was going to come in. And now the trick becomes something different. It's like it's, if you if you're not building up toward a giant magic release, you need to keep your eyes on the prize a little more carefully so that you don't lose the big picture ideas you had about magic being magical and that kind of stuff and creation myths really influencing what the world's like and editors and all that kind of stuff like we we we've kind of got those as big sort of signposts that like do not forget we are headed toward this stuff and even if we've got a goddamn fireball you know, lightning bolt, yeah, lightning, lightning bolt. bolt, fireball, healing potion. It sounds like we're making a really fucking stupid game, right? Sorry, um, but uh, no, we know where we're going, right? Uh, so I like fireballs; those are fun. We have I icicles like fire, yeah. right now. We have yeah. Icicles. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They, yeah, the, I icicles. like the yeah. And that dude's making all kinds of gestures, like the ten procedural undead dude gestures, like eh, hey, woo, ah, hey, and then you're you're suddenly you can't see, and there's fog, and you got hit with an ice bolt, um, yeah, which is you know that's why you don't mess with those people. It's very handy having a bunch of friendly, intelligent <laughs> undead just wandering around outside your fort for when a were creature arrives, and then it just gets stun locked onto the floor, which oh, happened yeah. to me earlier today. It's like, well, you can't do much, stab it to death. Um, <laughs> Well, there was like, uh, there's also Armok One had a ma had its own magic system. Oh God! Right, where you could teleport someone's brain over like three feet, and their body would just fall down. But like, what if yeah. we could do that? <laughs> yeah, I'm not. Yeah, we're not against that. I mean, I I say, oh God, because that was a deeply silly game. Excuse me, but um, I yeah, I don't I don't mind the uh, the nose teleporting spell or whatever. I mean, that's the thing that happens. Um, I can still go around biting goblins' ears off. Why not just do that from a distance with some magical teeth? <laughs> That's good stuff. Yeah, yeah, summon, yeah, just summon biting. Summon, summon, summon skulls. Yeah, summon like little child three-headed, three eyeball skulls, three eye socket skulls, and right. they last for twenty seconds, and they just bite and bite and bite. Rift Wizard is a neat little game that has a sequel coming out soon. That's entirely based in magic, a little roguelike. And uh, the original game had a spell called uh, something Maw, and it's just literally, it looks like dentures <laughs> floating in the air that just like starts biting and pulling things towards it, I think. Um, yeah, no, Riff, 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 Riff Wizard's cool. I've seen, uh, I've, seen it, I've seen it played through uh, all the way. I'm not good at games like that, but um, uh, it's cool to watch. Me neither, but yeah, I agree. Um, so the next question I have comes in from Telen Artho, and they say, Pathing question. Uh, also, mm -hmm. I, I think it's his birthday, so happy birthday. Hey, happy birthday. Um, he says, Entities tend to path through a water depth of three or less. This leads to some uncomfortable realities with waterfalls and visitors who path through the water at the top. Are there any plans uh, for pathing updates to allow for more sensible paths? <laughs> uh, that's a That sounds like a tricky problem. 
uh i see putnam saying oh god <laughs> it's, it's like yeah it's like it's like it could be done um <laughs> it's like do we want to pay the price of running the path twice or what if it didn't work you'd have to keep all these kind of extra i mean it's so hard to to keep that information um current when it's just like build a bridge please uh or something um and use the traffic designations maybe the traffic traffic designations is what they're looking for just like put that as in a high traffic area or something or low traffic or restricted area or whatever um it's just hard i mean i'd love for it to be like just a little bit more realistic people don't want wet shoes i don't like wet socks um and, yeah flying off waterfalls as the chat says uh that's a little different um and i don't know if the restricted stuff would help at all and i don't know why they were flying off i mean that sounds like uh yeah practically buggy territory which is of course something you'd like to address but um yeah hard problems uh something else i would like to just uh, applaud you for right now um in, in the time that we've been talking i've been generating a 1500 year old large world <laughs> and uh <laughs> it just completed in 51 minutes which i am amazed by <laughs> i'm still yeah. amazed by how fast these worlds generate <laughs> yeah it was just that one change too with the events and the books and stuff i think that accounted for almost all of this um yeah <laughs> next question um i have comes from uh meka 32 and they say uh judging from the footage the hair and clothing color of sentient creatures and portraits don't appear to as they sorry don't appear as they actually are instead uh showing them with white hair and clothing and will this remain upon release yeah i saw that and i was like yeah i, I don't know what's going on yet there the palettes should be the same the colors they're drawing from should be the same and yet there's a slight difference right uh, sometimes extreme bad difference yeah but, someone forgot a semicolon or something yeah i got I, yeah it's 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 i i know about it um you know <laughs> we also have goblin hair i haven't put it in um because the goblin the goblins didn't have hairstyles. Now I've got a bunch of different hair pictures for them, and I just need to figure out what the styles mean, or if I put in a bunch of new descriptions of the pictures I see. It's kind of an art-first thing, and so um, they just need numbers and then maybe not be described or something. But it's all there. Like the purple hair, it's not like we forgot about their purple hair. Uh, it's there. Uh, the next question I have comes in from Val Salan, and they say, Will there ever be an option in the trade menu to select all items in a bin without selecting the bin itself? I usually have a separate stockpile zone for goods to be traded with elves, but when I trade mm -hmm. with them, I still need to select every individual yeah. item in the bin because bins are made of wood. I make my bins out of copper, but I mean, you do you. <laughs> yeah, I know it's an, an admirable... It's a it, yeah. People have been asking, probably asking for that for ten years or something, um, and I like it. <laughs> I always thought it was like a nasty trick to pull on the yeah, pull on the players, but I guess it is a little annoying. It's, it's funny, yeah. No, it's like we go through, we go through like it's like at first it is, and then when you get so far into the, it's been ten years, and you're like, no, we just right. love new tricks. We actually have a quite a quite a growing list of tricks for the army arc uh, that. Uh, y'all can deal with and we're not going to spoil them for you um that should be fun the next question comes in from peter <laughs> and they say hey everyone thanks for all the hard work i recently just got in got really into a world building many forts at all uh is it safe to continue here or will the update bring new fun stuff that would call for generating a new world so i think that it's pretty much a play style thing uh if you are doing forts mostly uh i mean you'll still have adventure mode you can play i mean we're, we're it, it's save compatible right you can do an adventure in your old forts but if you were like i want to have uh you know a full demigod experience or something like that that's going to rely partially on new content that won't be in old worlds so uh i think um well, like the dungeons like stuff. the dungeon stuff and 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 the fact that we can't like generate healing juices or whatever they're called divine juices um uh and retroactively kind of i mean it, it's one of these things where we could but it'd be a nightmare of index indexing of materials and things so we just don't generally do it um and uh so so that's the kind of thing you'd be missing out on i think fort mode it generally is is about this about fine and adventure mode would be missing certain certain key elements if you if you didn't regenerate okay so 
don't get too attached to your world i guess is the yeah i mean it really depends like i say like if, if you if you're just a fourth person you want to make another 20 fourths in that world you're not going to notice i mean you'll notice later maybe you know if you if it takes you a year to do that then there's more stuff coming but yeah mm -hmm. totally um I'm probably going to generate a new world and then just make like nine non fourths in a in a day and just kind of <laughs> build little holes in the ground to have a place to visit and that's about it. Um, <laughs> the the next question that I have comes in from Caldfer, I think, uh, and uh, they say intelligent creatures without associated entities such as Gorlax and animal people are naked and mostly act like wild animals. Is the plan to eventually create civilizations for each of these, or perhaps some other way to interact with wild intelligent creatures? Yeah, no, I shed a tear for the Gorlax. It's like mm -hmm. the worst thing we've. It might be the. Is it the worst thing we've done? Is like make the Gorlax such a lovable creature give them a such an endearing description such an endearing picture and um then just like sure you have the ones that that get propped up in world gen and then can visit you and then the rest of them yeah it's like it's like planet of the apes or something and there's all these humans running around being murdered and or whatever it's this it's just it's it's like yeah it's it's depressing um we had the the marked out thing for that was when we were going to do animal people stuff which is the entity rewrite etc because we couldn't do nomadic entities the entities needed to be tied to locations unless there are specific kinds of entities etc just general annoyances and this is a this is a similar to a big weight type of thing uh is trying to conceive of the entity rewrite as not like i just have this tendency to say oh yeah i'm doing this giant thing it's like no this is a this could be like a 15 component change that gets rolled out one at a time and one of those could be oh by the way we can conceptualize a little society of people mm -hmm. underground that are cool I just want to be able to stop the frogmen from attacking me. <laughs> That's all I want. Yeah, just um, delete them from the raws. They're so bad right now. I just go into the difficulty settings and make it so they can't spawn and wait for a forgotten beast to show up and deal with it. <laughs> yeah. And fight yeah. them when I feel like it when I'm bored. It's a, it's not bad, but it's <laughs> suboptimal, I would say. Um, Definitely suboptimal, yes. Yeah, it'll be the army arc. will take care of that. Yeah, something's going to take care of it. Yeah, yeah. No army arc. The army arc, there's no arcs. arcs. There's oh, no arcs. Oh, there's no arcs. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I meant the nasty surprises. Yes, that's right. Oh yeah, the nasty surprise. Oh yes. Uh, <laughs> I, I I still want the siege arc just so that I can put a goblin in a catapult and throw it at the wall. <laughs> yeah, everything really. I mean, we need to add manure at some point. I mean, we're 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 we've been established enough now that we can be the poop game. I mean, wouldn't manure be like part of a farming type update? Yeah, you all wanted farming. It's farming the first thing you're gonna get. Your first thing you're gonna get, you like, you get a horse in adventure mode, and you have to put the one of those little bags behind it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> it was just, it was just amazing how many people wanted that. Like, mm -hmm. it was just so, so uh, lobbied for. Yeah. Do you do? Do do. Yeah, It'll be cool. I can't wait it's... to weaponize the do. Mm -hmm. It's important work. Speaking of things we can't do, um, this is uh, a question from Al... I'm not even going to try and say this one. Um, uh, they, they say, uh, hi, everyone. Here's my question. Uh, we have bones and mills in the game. Why can't we make bone meal? Um, minotaurs can. Yeah. Um, Actually, that's, that's an actual dungeon that we already created. The minotaurs already, already start in a god-created dungeon. Yeah. The, the yeah. labyrinth. Yeah, it's one of our, one of our, good, one of our actually... You know, it does. It accomplished what it set out to do when we got rid of the 3D maze maps because that was <laughs> the worst possible thing. Oh man, yeah, that's impossible to conceive of. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, I mean, it's 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 like bone meal is a is a is I guess what fertilizer mainly or something. It's like when this NPK thing is that the P is that the K? It's also a pseudo like healing thing as well. I think you can do a lot of a lot of stuff with bone meal. Um, like a pseudoscience uh, thing. That, that's what I was like. Yeah, about. yeah. Well, yeah. Well, well, well. The thing is, it ain't gonna be pseudoscience when you have to like build your build your healing potion with bone meal and and like orca fat or something. Um, then we'll have a lot more uh, sort of for fortresses on the water. And oh. We got to get those. We got to get those harpoon boats in. You know. I've still never Jay, seen a whale. Yeah, J Pod. Well, have you seen Have you seen a zombie whale? I remember when they were coming up on the beaches. No, I've, like, I've never seen a zombie whale. I've seen sharks. I've seen mermaids. Uh, I've never seen a sea monster. 
Huh. Um, there, there's yeah. like a because I, 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 I was helping out NoClip with footage for mm -hmm. the the filming you guys did, and I had to go back to a lot of older versions of the game that I missed entirely. Um, and a lot of that stuff was a lot more common back then. Uh, so there's a lot of that stuff when I was going back for that. But um, I think there's just so many other things in the world now that it's just so much less likely that you'll see one. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a shame because uh, the whales are fun. Especially with default world gen, things like haunted oceans are less likely. Eh. Yeah. Well, fortunately, we're, we're slowly approaching the time when we're just going to throw a shoot a meteor at that anyway, right? So let's just shoot a meteor at it instead. Shooting um, meteors at the world mid game sounds fun too. Yeah. Um, oh, exactly. That's part of the point. You know, I've got a map rewrite for you. <laughs> forest fires. I'm in the Pacific Northwest. I need forest fires. So this is a, an interesting question from Nemoter, and they say, uh, "In the past, you've said keeping the graphics and UI simple made developing new features much easier. Will the new UI make adding features a lot harder going forward?" Yeah, a little bit. Uh, uh, yeah, and just we count on uh, you know, the artists have to be have to be uh, have to have to uh, draw the stuff for us, and the the implementation requires scroll bars, <laughs> which all you know, Tarn has like fifty out of fifty sanity, and this gets reduced yeah. by three points every time he has to make a scroll bar. Yeah, I like Putnam's new widgets. Once once that's, I mean, that's that's pretty much up to speed, and so we're going to be widgetified. That'll help. But, you know, we we found. I mean, we we haven't quite gotten to it yet, um, but we've got a good flow with the artists now. I think like that that part is as long as you kind of know what you're doing, and this kind of ties into the uh, the dev page stuff, the conversation as well, right? It's like um, get that get that. I mean, I, we just haven't been tested on new features yet, and it's been. I mean, it's been, I know it's been a long time, but that's just how it's been for the last several years. Um, so we'll have to see. I don't think that the game is going to be super slow compared to what it used to be um, because, yeah, people work in parallel and there's not a ton of overhead. Mm -hmm. There's a little bit of overhead. There are some meetings and things. Um, but people are enthusiastic and competent. Um, the, the audio people can practically do things on their own. The artists can practically do things on their own. Just, just a little bit of direction and um, we're good. And then I've, I mean, my main thing is being the bottleneck on some of this data entry stuff that I've got to figure out, um, you know, probably have a smarter way of doing that. And, uh, but I think, uh, no, I think you can expect to see some new shit this year. I'm, I'm very curious about stuff that's coming out this year, but um, <laughs> continuing along with my audience submitted questions here, I got one from Midnight Dreary, and they say, uh, can we get statues for werebeasts? This is also on the art, the art topic. Uh, since it's uh, just a palette swap, I'd love to be able to add to my collection of trophies that I've taken. I think currently if you make a statue of a werebeast, it's just a moon. Yeah, that's because the um, they're, they have procedural um, uh, pictures... Uh, even though they aren't that interesting, because uh, we have that thing where the forgotten beasts are generated, you know, piece by piece, and so obviously statues with them are a whole different problem because a statue has to be restricted to a 64 by 32 area and almost effectively a 32 by 32 area sitting on top of the pedestal. This is not the same size as the new creature itself, which is you know 96 by 64. And some of the for, some of the werebeasts are large as well. What we've generally been doing for that in the hard coded things is simply reducing their size in a, uh, a paint program and and then palletizing them, right? And so the palletizing can be done in uh programmatically um but the or just be in the image file like an extra image file but is that the solution like an extra image file do we need to just make little a little like forgotten beast file that builds those up and also little versions of all the werewolves you see how this is not super hard but a all the same it's several days of work um mm -hmm. so that's that's the whole problem that's the entire problem but the problem right now is there's a big thing with a deadline and everything else takes time and time is limited. Yes. And hopefully we'll be away from this this lifestyle <laughs> after this deadline, although that's just not how things work, but we'll see. It'll just be different, smaller deadlines, probably. Um, yeah. I mean that's the thing. It's like you can't you can't ignore the fact that there's like Steam exists 
and all that stuff. So you need to you need to think ahead. You need to think about what time things are happening, um, or it's just it's just kind of inefficient and bad bad news. Right, they're all coordinating with the artists and everything is yeah. also also time consuming. But at the same time, like deadline creating rather. When it's an open, when it's an open book, what we're, we're doing, we, you know, when when it when it's like there are not a bunch of menus sitting there, and really it's just up to us what we pick. Then, uh, yeah, all of those things have equal competition with uh, with other other stuff. And we'll just keep going. I, I I think it's really interesting reading through these submitted questions because you can really tell when people started playing, whether or not they started playing. Um, a long time ago or more recently, because sometimes we get questions like, do you plan on implementing, this comes in from Eurist McGeneral, they say, do you plan on implementing an in-fort market economy in the foreseeable future? Yeah, so so in-fort market economy in the sense of the the old uh, the old economy, um, oh, or, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's like, that was bad. Um, but no, I mean, the, 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 the ideas there still stand, which is uh, doing more with your... Um, like we have stuff sitting there, like all of your like it's like oh this village has become economically dependent on you, and it's like really, um, <laughs> not really, right? It's just uh, it's just there as kind of a uh, you know risk style, as like like they say with the strategy games, paint the map game. You're like I have claimed a town, I can change its color by sending out a raid, and I can you can do some things with it. I forget you you can occasionally get tribute or you can swap your workers out there or something, but like it's not interesting what if and this was one of the i mean the idea of kind of sitting on the the thing was having like those medieval fair type things and also having a a kind of um permanent market where you can set up multiple depots and have people come and 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 bring stuff from those places and have your dwarves come in come in and um get things from those places uh you know whether that involves you know money etc is a whole interesting question um that i i don't know how that's gonna how that's gonna play out i mean part of the problem with money was i mean we always had this problem with the just the checkbook accounting method where like the historical figures have an account now but the account is kind of it's not necessarily money right it also just kind of keeps track of your your you know favors and stuff right oh. it's just kind of a generic thing i think and the main problem with it, with it was that the rent was too damn high <laughs> and most of your dwarves didn't have a job and so they couldn't afford any of the rooms yeah, it was just a nightmare. So we can we can keep public housing, um, <laughs> and then uh, well, but the funny thing though is like because it, because it's fun thinking about like those Crusader King style games and stuff and Victoria and all those things where, you know, if we have the the entity sitting there with its ethics, with its laws, with its intellectual values, and then we allow the player to start being the official will of the fort, as we say, and start changing those things and have them kind of mechanically linked in then we can we can have experiments and partial like attempts toward things uh in a more kind of controlled environment than than that just big stupid rewrite which which blew up um and uh so it's it's it, it's um i think that's where it was where it was headed ever since we came up with the entity rewrite idea um, which was just like, yeah, you'll be able to change laws and things, but that's, you know, in the, in the broad sense, uh, that's probably how it'll come in. Although these market type relationships might come in first, just because those are sitting there. Personally, uh, th this is just me spitballing, but, um, one of the biggest complaints I see is like, I need to fill the need or I need to fill the need of acquire object. It would be really cool <laughs> if like clothes and stuff could just be taken to the trade depot that is just like sitting on the ground that isn't owned and then dwarves that need that could just go there and get it that could yeah. almost be what they're talking about here with this question yeah just a swap kind of kind of internal I and mean, people should repair clothes people should hand hand me down clothes i mean there's there's a lot of um there's a lot going on i mean the clothing the clothing yes. stuff is ridiculous especially how fast the clothing get damaged it gets damaged and there's no 
there's no sort of really clean automated nice way of dealing with damaged clothing and replacing it as you know it's partial and not great i don't know um, my, my mind cart know. that just takes all clothing that is below <laughs> like masterwork quality and automatically dumps it into a volcano is pretty efficient except, <laughs> except for when it makes mist go up at the wrong angle when it catches oh, fire, geez. which is happening well, all the time so. yeah, it's a hazard uh, that's perfectly <laughs> fine you have several dwarves it's fine can, yes. no, they, yeah, there's, there's more lemmings where that came from um <laughs> Oh no, Cannon and Fodder both died. That's unfortunate. Um, <laughs> so uh, I, I've got a question from Era Fire, which we sort of talked about a little bit, but maybe we could elaborate a little bit. Have there any been? Uh, wow, have there been any changes to the worship and focus system for Adventure Mode? Uh, one of the biggest issues that's kept me from coming back is that every long-running fort eventually ends up with. Uh, the mo with almost every single one of the biggest. Well, well, let me try this again. Mm -hmm. um, the one of the things that's kept me from coming back is that every long running fort eventually ends up with most everyone permanently unhappy and distracted and stuck in a loop of trying to pray to every single god. Uh, dwarves often don't pray to the god that they actually need to in generic temples, for example. Yeah, I've, I mean, I've, I've seen those. I've seen those complaints. Did a pass on it. Doesn't seem to have helped. I guess, um, like, because that just sounds broken, right? That mm -hmm. doesn't even sound like a. That doesn't even sound like a. Like yeah. a uh, what you would call it? Uh, Feature request. Yeah, or a mechanical like issue. It sounds like praying is just broken, right? I almost wonder if it's a tutorialization issue too, because I've run into people who talk about things like this and then I realize that they don't have like any kind of guilt like any kind of guild halls they don't have like they're not meeting other needs because mm -hmm. I might be mistaken in this and maybe Putnam could even like correct me but like from what I can tell you don't need to meet every single need all the time you just need to meet most of them most of the time yeah it's not it's not supposed to be I think part of the problem with it is just how how and I, I'm not I'm not saying there's no bugs but part of the problem is that when 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 people who are used to playing video games see a giant checklist and some red things are on it, they're like, okay, you know, this is not great. But that's just life. I mean, <laughs> you're supposed to be distracted some of the time. You're supposed to be kind of meeting your needs. You're supposed it's supposed to be just part of their story, and it feels too. I mean, there's some uh, some sense of which the phrasing and the presentation are too gamified or something that yeah, it doesn't come across that way. Shouldn't show those smiley faces at all. <laughs> <laughs> just have a percent or something I, don't know. I just want like the ability for dwarves to be able to send letters to friends outside of the fort that's oh that's a different matter yeah no dream. unmeetable unmeetable needs unmeetable needs are definitely a a problem yeah yeah because so many dwarves just like don't have family or whatever um like cause yeah they should find because if we just had the concept of like you know through your friends and you, you could have like a found family type situation right it should meet the same need. I mean, I, I think that the the it's sort of I don't know what what taking family ties that are that are differentiated from friendships in a way that's kind of stark and unrealistic and and not how people live their lives. We just need blood brothers or Armok brothers, maybe. Yeah, adoptions like like people adopting adopting adult children and stuff. Just all kinds of cool. Uh, cool things of course this brings us to dwarven daycare yeah. um which and is still still high up on the list um, somebody could adopt that zombie baby i have when the mom dies yeah <laughs> no the zombie baby will live forever uh so or unlive, unlive forever yes it's like yeah no it sounds like the type of thing that will eventually become sort of the civic center of the fort um Gosh, like I hope so. <laughs> the whole there should be a whole religion built around zombie baby a whole society it's kind of like the the, the god emperor of dune that's relevant these days um yeah just kind of there being baby so Forever. um fish speakers this question is kind of one that's been rattling around in my brain a little bit and i guess kind of also leads to like the next year of stuff, I guess. Uh, now that we are getting close to the release of Adventure Mode, uh, what is the next item on your to-do list uh, that you want to tackle? Uh, go back to Villain's Work, other additions to Adventure Mode, question marks, and that comes in from Stoyan. Yeah, we talked about that quite a bit, right? That yeah. we're just trying... Yeah, we're trying to be like... Um, we're being circumspect about this. <laughs> we're going to finish Adventure Mode. We have our list of things, which mainly involves... 
finishing out our uh, our deity ideas, which I I think there and dungeon ideas and magic ideas that bring some of those other things along for the ride, like villains and army stuff definitely coming along for the ride there, and certain changes to to how sort of adventure mode living works. Like, all the things that we were kind of working on fit into it, but it just has a way more magic-centric focus because we're we're finally, like... I mean, this is the time where if I, if I were doing uh, classic only, like, we would have been, like, how deep into the magic at this point? Mm -hmm. Like, we would have been in it, right? And I feel like, um, um, yeah, I don't know. It's like for some reason it popped in my head. It's like, yeah, like the people that were gouging us on egg prices to make up their losses during COVID. That's what I'm doing. I'm going to just get into magic and, and get to where I was going to be. <laughs> it's like, uh, that's that's, uh, that's eggs not finally the best. got affordable not, here again. <laughs> yeah, same here. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not the best analogy, of course, generally. But because uh, we're not gouging, we're we're we're. There's going to be like magic in the game. That'll be cool. Um, so yeah, so I think I think that's the the plan is to kind of keep in that general direction um, and just playing around with procedural dungeons because um, we need some entertainment in life. I think, and it's a good test bed for for doing new new magic and 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 things like that. Having these weird primordial places. Right. I think they don't understand what you're talking about when you say the army arc because this is like yeah the siege arc that kind of yeah thing. like dwarf mode siege is like yeah because how satisfied are you with the I get sieged once a year and close my door and can't can't I mean, yeah. make peace with them yeah once all that yeah. yeah well yeah. <laughs> My current force getting sieged twice a season. What are you talking about? <laughs> it might have something to do with the lava powered minecart cannons I have. Oh. No. Well, that's good. Yeah, they're, good they're pretty cool. rapid fire. I got them going so fast, I couldn't actually hit the switches fast enough to make them like drop down. So I had to connect yeah. them all to the same things. It was, I, wonder, I, wonder, I wonder what the world population is. Because, I mean, are they. Uh, yeah, I don't know if you have like. Does DF Hack let you like look at the population uh, of a uh, civilization and see like how you're doing? Do so they. The, this is after like goblin spawning got reworked again after the last patch and i've got like multiple 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 goblin areas around me and also a dwarven faction that i'm at war with with like <laughs> two to three thousand people in them um, oh wow so and I've, I've been stealing cave dragons from the goblins by the way that's a thing <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's it's uh it's gotten pretty violent i'm kind of sad i can't ste steal like ogres and stuff but I want Shrek. Yeah. Them. Well, that, that see that enters into the. I mean, are, are, do ogres have slow learner, or uh, slow learner is so complicated with the dwarven ethics? It's like I did have a need? gremlin captain of the guard. I achieved that. <laughs> that <laughs> was always supposed to be about them. The yeah. The, yeah. We always were planning to let that happen and then have them still pull the levers anyway. Um, like they just get that lever bug inside of them, you know. Open doors. Yeah, yeah. Release things from cages, uh, which is not great for a captain of the guard. You like go down to the prison. You're like, I need to let all these people out right that now. Sounds perfect for captain yeah. of the guard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know about you. It's 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 like when the, the the captain of the guard gets corrupted on the way to interrogating somebody, yeah. <laughs> and then you can't convict them, and then they steal the item anyway. It's great. Yeah, yeah. Putnam says ogres are slow learner. I think that's probably what's going on. That's a guess anyway. Um, so so they get they get kind of incorporated into goblin society, and then aren't treated like livestock the same way. Um, right. And then it also like triggers like thinking about the dwarf slave tag and all that kind of stuff, like. It's just comp. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, makes sense. It's a, yeah. Speaking of things that make sense, um, <laughs> this one's going to sound confusing initially because you sort of can, but I, I think I understand what they're asking about in the question. Uh, this comes in from Zazersi, I think is how you say their name, although it's probably Polish or something and I'm butchering it. Um, and the question is, uh, will we ever be able to create our own roads in fortress mode? Which I assume they mean on the world map, like from place to place. Well, you remember the old version like old version how far back in time do you have to go back to when you could actually build that road and it mattered to have like this road I, yeah there was this really old i don't was that pre-release or was that in the original version the I 2d version where you had any a, recollection yeah 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 the dirt there was a dirt road and then there was a a paved road that connected up and you had to connect it up and you couldn't get the king until you had a paved road off the left side of the map um, might have been the 2D version, like Bumper that was the, that was the that was like like version 
zero point two three. Yeah, so that, that was yeah, that like been, yeah, that, yeah, that would have been the the two D one way back. Yeah, then. I just don't even remember if it was. Yeah, okay. So so that was oh someone said it was in forty D as well. Um, so so that that like like these so these world gen roads were always meant to just hook it right into that system, and then of course yeah things just got complicated three D and and uh, so that's yeah you're supposed to be able to build. Um, there's also walls that we never. I don't think we put those in. There's there's code in the game for for walls, like Great Walls, like like Great oh. Wall of China walls, huh. like Hadrian's Wall and stuff. So you can have big walls, and um, and and you know you can see from space. Like some and, Songs uh, of Six stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't. Well, I, you know, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't play Songs of Six enough to know. Like, do they have like? Yeah, I don't know. Like, they have like well, ten tile thick walls that are just okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Them. Big old walls. Yeah, like the Siege game, um, and uh, like. It, it it's it's like that tunnels tunnels roads and walls like and also being able to dig underground tunnels being able to f you know, like found new mountain homes um underneath the ground that you can trade with or something right um and having like the the underground tunnel uh going through the caverns to reach them um like that's that's a that's a whole other critter um that we were like we didn't have timeline for any of that stuff because it kind of got dropped but it's just sitting there right uh you could have your you you wouldn't send out squads in that case i guess you'd send out like you know engineering groups or whatever it's like i mean this is like civ now right you're like the little engineer unit that makes the little road but um someone's got to do it right um one of the ways i explained dwarf fortress to people who've never played it is it's sort of like playing extraordinarily slow civ except every fort is a tile <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's like so. Yes, yeah. So you got your theater you district by and building stuff. the engineers guild. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, I mean, someone's guys. Yeah, it's like, it, 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 do we do we risk connecting anything to the scholars um, when they invent invent roads or whatever weird stuff? It's all strange that it all happens in the little room with the 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 library people too, instead of out in the in the workshops. Oh no! Once but, they once they invent roads, they're going to invent uh, horseless carriages. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> and with magic that mine... might even be possible. You can make a minecart track that's just between two external, <laughs> like cities, or in the tunnels. In the tunnels underground, just this really long minecart track. I'm in. Let's do it. Constantly have to scrape out like, you know, rotherer poop from the the, so that it still functions. All right. So the, the the next question is something we haven't touched on today at all, uh, which comes in from Lato, Latino uh, thirty HB, and they say, "Hello, I play a lot on both Steam Deck and PC. Do you think that you will ever implement a cross saving system for Dwarf Fortress?" Steam Deck CP cross. So that means, I mean, does that mean cloud like saves. cloud cloud saves? Yeah, cloud saves for. So the only issue we had with cloud saves was that was that we got big saves, um, and uh, those are yeah it's just typically a problem in a few different ways um just sitting there synchronizing for 55 minutes when you turn off the game every time or something um and uh i don't know if we can ever turn them on by default um but that's that's the whole issue hmm. i wonder if there's just like some sort of error world too big yeah that could we be. Just have <laughs> or just because nope. yeah because there's plenty of yeah, if you're not if you're not generating one of these giant things and you've just got like a like a you know a 17 megabyte save file, which is not uncommon, then uh, yeah, why not? I mean, not everything needs to be the nonsense I'm generating behind my head right now. <laughs> like <laughs> 1,125. It's oh, going. No, not 25, 24 still. It stopped. Also, for anybody there it goes watching, pop. If for anybody watching <laughs> these right now, uh, I'm going to uh, upload these saves to my Google Drive and stick them in the description of the VOD once it's up. Um, if anybody wants to run around in them or explore in them or uh oh, expelled and some sacred sites were desecrated. Yeah, this is definitely the later. Oh yeah, the later. Are necromancers off or how did you handle that? Oh, everything is on. This is mo oh I, yeah. I, tur I turned down minerals. That's it. Uh, and huh? then just extended the running time. It's in yeah, the, so still in the age mm -hmm. of myth. Yeah, that's what? amazing. Not not everyone is dead. Do necromancers not win every time by like year five hundred anymore? I think the goblins have a better chance of winning now. Um, not, not really. Just kind of polling mm. chat. Do like necromancers just take over everything? I, I know they kind of just integrate into society, which might be the equivalent. Yeah, um, yeah, that is weird. But uh, like, I, I, I get a lot of like my current world currently. 
I had a queen who was a necromancer who accidentally fell into lava because she re she caused a undead goblin to appear beneath her, and it used force pull and pulled her through the battlements, and she <laughs> fell into the lava, which was pretty epic. Um, and then uh, the, uh, the, the 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 diplomat that comes from the humans every year is a necromancer, so they're just kind of there. Um, mm -hmm. But I don't know if that necessarily means they take over. Like the world doesn't necessarily fall over. Yeah, that's nice. I mean, it's good to know. I mean, it was it was depressing. And we'll still we'll still continue to work on the on the balance. We need big changes. We need big big changes. That's part of what the magic release was all about. Now it's just the magic stuff that we're mm -hmm. doing. World changes every five hundred years. Something. Yeah, I mean, you know, yeah. The world. I mean, the myth, the myth and magic. Yeah. Pieces, I guess. So the pieces. Uh, we need a new. Pieces, yeah. Yeah. We, need, we need names for what we're doing now. We've we're we're like experiencing like arc removal trauma right now we don't know yeah. what how to talk about the game anymore well it'll just be a typical typical steam game when yeah. in this update in this update we're doing these we're doing, points, we're yeah. doing the conjunction it's now now worlds can have procedurally generated arc or like astrological weirdness that happens and occasionally some really terrible crap happens you know all I have to say is it, when, when we do get weird additions to world gen and the custom world gen menu gets bigger, can we please, please, please get a search function for it? Because I always have to like stare at it and just be like, duh, which one is which? Like, yeah. Mineral scarcity. And yeah, just yeah, just let, let Torn make another interface. And it's the mistake y'all been making. It doesn't need another interface. It just needs a search function. Yeah, well, that's the thing. I mean, Pundum's been doing great, right? I mean, yeah. there's, there's, we got a lot of search stuff now. We got sorting, we got searching. Everybody's very happy about the searching. I know this much. Yeah, arena, arena weapons are still crap. That's so hard to, hard to put those in. I've been, I've been suffering during testing. I should probably fix that up. Um, but yeah, got to get a troll leather cap. You got to find it. So the next question I have comes in from Valsalan again, and they say, will we ever be able to lock production orders so they can't be deleted by accident? <laughs> that sounds like a very specific request. Uh, we have, uh, and it seems like a reasonable thing, you know? That's all we can say about stuff like that. It's like people, people ask for it, and uh, enough people clamor for a little lock button or whatever. Um, uh, now this is this is things that they're deleting because they they press the delete button um, or because they they complete and they didn't and they had them on one shot instead of repeat. I guess there's a few ways this could happen. Um, but uh, oh, okay, so Putnam, yeah, Putnam, yeah, Putnam says that uh, they're, they're already they're already pondering pondering this. I I, I know that I almost always have a adamantine ballista arrow assembly in there canceling that I forgot to delete because I accidentally clicked it. <laughs> um, yeah, and, and, and does it just not have a confirmation either? That's really common yeah, for, me to I, put in a for me to put in a delete button without a confirmation. Yeah, how many times have I done that? I know DF Hack has added uh, confirmations for all of those, but I have that stuff disabled because it also adds confirmations for things I don't want confirmations for, and so I'm yeah, equally annoying should, in a different direction. There's, well, it should be a thing, right, where where it's kind of like those pop-ups that pop up the first time you look at a screen that says, don't show this again. Like, if you have a mm -hmm. if you have a confirmation, I mean, it just has the confirmation, and then it just has a little thing that says, don't don't ask me again. Yeah. That's pretty That's pretty common. Um, okay, so this we covered, that we covered. This is a pretty relevant question to, like, right now. So this one comes in from Raviticus, and they say... How do you feel about various games that draw inspiration from Dwarf Fortress? And are you worried about competing or honored by their love for Dwarf Fortress? Uh, I mean, there's a whole genre now. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we've, we've played them at times, right? I mean, it's fun to have more games to play. Uh, it's all good, and there's no... Uh, I mean, we're competing with everybody. I don't, I don't know that we... It doesn't feel like... We're competing with them and yeah, I mean, they're competing just, with everybody. Yeah, else. what is it like now that there's like a it was like a thousand concurrent players? So I guess we're competing with Crusader Kings and uh, Minecraft at this point or something, right? Mm -hmm. It's like there there's just so many eyeballs. Yeah. That uh, you have to, yeah, it's lots like, of stuff to play. I mean, right, I play yeah. all kinds of games too. I mean, I'm I I mean, if it, if it were my my time, it would be competing with, you know. <laughs> like backpack hero or something right i mean is it the same is it the same like those are it's not so it just doesn't feel like competition people people playing playing games everything's good 
and yeah yeah and there's lots of cool ideas more and more people i'm sure all of the ideas wrap back around people's interface ideas and stuff are probably filtered through those experience playing those games and that kind of thing the next question i have is kind of a fun one this comes in from salva daddy which is have you thought up any new monsters randomly since the last time you added some we added <laughs> that's a funny story like, you know, we we came up with all of the underground monsters in one afternoon uh we just scribbled little <laughs> pictures of them and gave them names and and uh, that's the extent of our <laughs> of our planning yeah did i did i show that to you oh yeah we still have it yeah this is yeah it must probably have... deserves to go in the moma or something yeah. have it yeah yeah i mean we had uh yeah showing like, gorlack yeah yeah here's the well, we got it. Oh, the camera's delayed, so I can't see. Um, I made you bigger, so it's easier to see too. There, can you? Uh, I, I was holding it too high, uh, or too low, or whatever. Is that showing up? Yeah, this yeah. is like ten, this is like fifteen years old or more. Yeah, Probably more than fifteen years old. Yeah, that's the original Dorlac drawing. Um, and uh, we've got the yeah. We just all that happened at the same time. We just kind of first we drew them. Like Zach and I were just taking taking turns drawing in the tablet. There might be another tablet. I don't remember. Um, I don't think so. Maybe that was it. And then we just named them. We just like here we'll name them all. And uh, uh, so that that's uh, um, yeah. Now I've completely forgotten. Oh yeah. The, what, are we gonna add new monsters? Oh yeah, like yeah. I think we we have added uh, we added night trolls or uh, experiments. I I mean we. It's expanded were creatures a bunch. It's just, uh, yeah, and like with these dungeons, I think we were contemplating adding. There's, yeah, there's contemplation there, for yeah. new monsters to fit into the, the kind of um, things we're missing. Are well, they're like, like more. All of it is more procedural. Yeah, know? exactly. It's all. It's all still procedural. I mean, it's hard to. Are we ever going to add stuff that's not procedural again? Is a good question. Outside of like you know new animals or something like like. Uh, I know that we're missing a lot of animals, right? I, like I, one the thing that I always uh, I always wanted us to do eventually was that uh, when we were doing a, the animal sponsorship drive, someone had the idea to do extinct animals. No, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. a good one. Yeah, all of the eras of extinct animals, and not not just the 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 big mammal era, you know, with all the the saber tooth tigers and other horrifying like this is eight times as large as a bear stuff, and of course dinosaurs people love. But what about like the Cambrian explosion? There's some really cool, weird... Giant trilobites. Yeah, giant, like, giant, like vacuum cleaner-looking things that move around really slow and are kind of half-baked because everything is so new. Like, we're just learning how to bite. <laughs> it's like, we've invented biting. Um, and then you just be like, what the what the hell is that? Uh, yeah, that's so there's a lot of fun, fun, fun potential uh, there. Uh, I mean, we wouldn't, we wouldn't need to do a sponsorship drive again, but we, we can think of some way to make that fun. Yeah. Um, I, so, yeah. I remember once, right after you added uh, intelligent undead and necromancer experiments, I had a, a an army of necromancer experiments that were literal just blobs with a yeah. tentacle, <laughs> and they didn't. Yeah, do anything. yeah. Those <laughs> are the failed the failed experiments. That's a whole that's a whole uh, category. Yeah, yeah. And that's 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 the kind of thing too. Is like all of the necromancer experiments. If you took the necromancer experiments and then came up with a different excuse for them to be in some kind of primordial dungeon. Uh, and also spent more time thinking about special attack type stuff and uh, other special abilities and also just like a few other things that give them character then you're you're it's just you're just golden right that's awesome that's 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 the life um and then you you come up with a uh, a bit of exposition for it and um yeah live in the live in the dream in 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 two weeks flat and as yeah. far as the, um, the 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 notebook that you just held up, because um, I saw this fly by in chat, I, I think myself and a lot of other people out there would pay a considerable amount of money for a little hardcover set of scans of those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think cool. we'll, well, we'll, yeah, we'll figure out something to do with it. Um, and yeah, it's just we just found it recently going through some boxes. It had been lost for you know a decade or something. Please scan them. Um, <laughs> yeah, before we lose it again, because it, it's just sitting over here. I just pulled it out of like a pile of. Uh, yeah, it's on like lined note paper too. It's not even on a. Yeah, there it's were, not even on a drawing pad. Or there, anything. there were there were a few. I, I won't show them now. I'll save it for when we actually reveal this thing. But um, there were some legendary ones that didn't make it. 
there were a few cuts like like magma walrus um that didn't make it in like uh like it's, a crab but like it's just the walrus it's it's really that's the reason it got cut because like it's a walrus <laughs> There's a magma know. seal. There's a magma seal and a magma. Oh no, I'm I'm not saying it's a terrible idea. I just said we put the Gorlack in first. You know, mm-hmm. so a magma, magma walrus man. and fire man. Yeah, <laughs> oh, damn, blood men and Gabro. <laughs> like why Gabro? There's something special about Gabro. Um, yeah, there's this nice kind of, men just for the pun. There's this kind of nightmare lord demon thing and a bull demon, and those didn't make it in just because that all got proceduralized as like the procedural demon generator. But Jabra, yeah, the magma like, seal. Oh, you were, yeah, there, you were there's kidding. the magma seal. No, I'm not getting to the magma seal. Uh, uh, but everything else made it in. There's the Monera. Oh no, cave worm. This fifteen, this fifteen foot long cave worm. I don't think. Oh, really. that would look kind of cool. Too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Bug bat, Drunian, a Monera, cave worm, Mulmerian, mole rat man, magma seal, magma rollers, Jabber, pond grabber, blind cave bear, cave dragon, Reacher, nightmare lord, bull demon, uh, different rock people. Um, reptile man, Gorlack, cave fish man, and that's that's it. Um, so there's there's other ones that weren't in there, like the voracious cave crawler and stuff. I think there might be another notebook. Fan art engine notebook. go. <laughs> <laughs> but wow, I I, you know, for some reason I never like even thought about the concept of not everything making it in. Um, yeah. Like, yeah, there's wow. a lot on the cutting room. I was floor, a yeah. Blood Man was one of them, right? Yeah, well, that's why I think there's a missing notebook. Yeah, there must it's be. disturbing. I think, yeah, no, I think, I think half of them, like Helmet Snake, like oh, what, you're right. Yeah, they're we just ripped out a page. Yeah, something. There's oh. a missing or no? I think what happened because didn't you draw all of these? Are these all your drawings? I think um, my notebook is missing. I think uh, this is your notebook. That's right. We must have had two because we did it yeah, at the same you, time. You, yeah, you drew the Gorlack. Yeah, we did it at the same time. So I think, yeah, my my uh, my drawings are missing. Oh. Which is fine. Zach's so, drawings are better. <laughs> well, He's yeah, idea. but the, the, the sole programmer, yeah. genius, Program our genius uh, leader of but, the project, and yeah. his, uh, they're drawing, they're missing. his drawings are gone. My programmer <laughs> art. My programmer <laughs> art. Of, True programmer yeah, art. Yeah, Helmet Snake, Voracious Cave Crawler, um, that's there were others i drew about as many as zach did so sad half of the time i learn new animals exist in dwarf fortress because i see a random dwarf that likes it and i go that exists <laughs> um oh like yeah the rudder wasn't in there yeah oh yeah, right, the, yeah the elk bird and the elk bird yeah, yeah yeah those are mine that's right i remember that i drew those yeah oh yeah yeah oh that's a shame well if, well wherever this thing was found they were probably just on top of each other i know i know where i found this so i can actually i'm i haven't given up hope for the lost notebook yeah, the um the, the well, something i recently discovered exists was that um beavers exist and i realized i've never seen a beaver in dwarf fortress and now i just have this head cannon that the elves killed them all <laughs> um that's funny so <laughs> Yeah, point, that's like a good good crossover with it, our you're talking talking about the other dwarf like games. Yeah. Thinking of elves in that game. I changed everything. Mm-hmm. I, I've caught <laughs> up to um oh, yeah, the, 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 the Timberborn, the Beaver Builder. Yeah, yeah, Beaver the Elves of Timberborn. I, th- I always Timberborn. think of Timberborn as like a little bit closer to like the impressions games because it's very walker focused. Mm-hmm. Right, I was about but, to say it's like Caesar. Or it's like vertical Caesar yeah, yeah. with water physics. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's cool. But, I like I like video games. Neat game. Um, so at this point, I'm just down to like fun questions. So, uh, have you had any time to play any video games in the last? Oh yes, the the new DLC for Shadows of the Forbidden Gods came out, came out uh, two days ago, and that's all I've been playing. Deep cut. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, corpses and tentacles and things. Um, yeah, I haven't. I've have actually been um, buried. So yeah, not. It's an actual no for me this time. No video games. No time. No video games. Just no time. Staring at adventure mode. Yeah, yeah. Soon though, it's just because I knew that the date is coming up that I can stand it. You know. Yeah. Um, I've got a very important question from a very important individual who is a gremlin that is still running for mayor. And uh, <laughs> this question is to pull a lever or not to pull. That is the question. Yeah, whether to yeah suffer the. Uh, it, what does the Dareth do? 
something. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Seize the day. Seize the day. Yeah. Yeah. Carpe lever. Carpe lever. Ponder lever. I actually we had a we had a dwarf that was uh, a scholar that was just sitting there pondering lever for a very long time and then discovered the lever. We all had a, had a real good laugh out of that one. Um, <laughs> the secrets of the lever. Um, that's definitely somebody who left already. Um, but um, I uh, in forty minutes here I have a strata meeting I have to get to and um, I we've really? taken an hour and forty one minutes of your guys's time so I just want to say. Uh, Huge thank you for taking the time to chat with myself and chat while I generated 3,000 years of history, <laughs> um, which I'm kind of amazed. I, I kind of figured that would be long enough. Next one, I guess I'll actually have to set it to 3,000 instead of 1,500 if that crashes. Um, but uh, yeah, I really need to do some long world gens and see how if it fills up the yeah. hard drive. Well, it looks like the demon died and goblins were just sitting there like, I need a chief counselor now. So need somebody goblins in charge. Became. They get um, quite reasonable in 1,500 years. Yeah, just give them another a, a little bit, and maybe they won't all dream of ruling the world. Um, but, um, yeah, I, I think that, uh, you know, I, I always look forward to doing these. This is, uh, like, the highlight of mm -hmm. the quarter for me, and uh, I know chat always looks forward to them. People start asking me. It's like when chat starts asking me when is the next one, it's like, well, I guess it's time to set up and do another one. But um, I, I just have to say, like, seriously, thanks for lending us your time. I think chat appreciates mm -hmm. it as much as I do. And, um Look forward to chopping this one together. Yeah, YouTube channel. cool. All right, yeah, we'll get looking for that for the, the lost notebook. The lost notebook. <laughs> yes, I, th I think it's you important. just named the 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 Dwarf Fortress art book, the lost notebook. <laughs> but, yeah, um, no, it's 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 uh, it's great. Yeah, yeah no, good good to, good to be on. Good to be on. All right. Yep. Yeah. Time to say goodbye. Here's everybody. Goodbye.